Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jury Rig Garage. I'm Davis and this is Tristan here. We actually already did a bunch of work. We kind of wanted to get things prepped, but we're at the stage here where we have the subframe all cleaned up. Just took some degreaser, just scrubbed it, power washed it. Also got the bushings knocked out of here. Now it's ready for uh, the Rodney Dickman aluminum subframe bushings. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on this. If you guys are new to the channel, we are 3800 swapping my 1986 Pontiac Fiero. This is the 3800 that came out of Tristan's Camaro. Also, if you've been following along, you've seen its progression. It used to be in his Camaro, now it's not. And he's selling it to me, so. We have a uh, Fiero Raj mounts here. The upper dog bone won't be used just yet. I have the uh, lower mount right here. Fiero Raj mount, and then this is Rodney Dickman poly unit. We'll go in the stock location right there. Where I'll hold the motor. Then it'll be my task to build a transmission mount for the F23. We're doing an F23 five-speed manual swap on this thing. There's a couple of provisions already that we'll build off with some angle iron. So that's gonna be all custom. It's pretty yeah. pretty expensive just to buy a mount for one of these. The uh, West Coast Fiero kit, it's $420. There's another guy who makes some, but there's some modification that's needed with that. So if yeah. we're gonna be doing modification- This is like um, 30 bucks, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do this myself if there's some modification involved. So got some 3 16th inch angle iron. I think that'll be thick enough. Yeah, and it's gonna take some elbow grease. You know, but a lot cheaper if you do it yeah. yourself. So we're just doing this for test fitting purposes. I'm going, we're going to get this all connected. Hopefully sat down on the subframe here. All right, guys, we're back. Sorry, I haven't been really recording much. I've just been gotten into the process of just getting everything fabricated up. Well, as you saw, we got the motor on here. What I've done now is just started on the transmission mount for the front. So as you can see, it ties in three mounting locations. I just got it roughly welded up. I'm gonna be cleaning that up. So the top mount needs to somehow get down to the bottom mount. So there's a hole here, and then there's another hole over in here. There it is. I'm gonna take some angle iron and just basically shoot straight down to some plates. But before I start on that, I need to figure out where the motor is going to be, you know, in relation to the subframe, make sure everything's all level. I haven't really found much information online on this. So what I did is working on an assumption here, but where the subframe mounts to the uh, frame, I'm assuming that's going to be flat or kind of what we want. So what I've done here is I will level it to that plane then take it over to the other flat surface. So that's within... 0.2 of a degree, I'll take that. That is the uh, level, the motion forward or back here. So then the nose and then the rear, you can see as it sits, it's getting a little bit more accurate. Then we have this plane, which is the motor rocking forward or back or sideways. Get this zeroed. And again, on the flat surface, this did shift a little bit, I believe, because I was sawing something. Uh, no, it's actually even and out. But if it's anywhere lower, then half a degree, I'll take that. Half a degree is pretty workable, all things considered. Just as long as nothing is touching. I did check all around, it looks pretty tight, but it is not touching down there. It's gonna be solid mounted. And the front motor mount has some adjustment. So what I've done is basically push the motor, everything as forward as possible, because otherwise this was hitting. But what I'm about to do is break out the CAD cardboard aided design, and I'm going to make a plate for the bottom part here basically to sit. And then I'm going to take an angle iron, which is just a L piece, but go straight down and connect to it. All right, guys, just showing you a little update here. As you can see, there's the angle iron. It goes down to the plate that's on there. I'll try to give you as much view as this as I can. So if you guys are replicating it, you can do the same. Basically also going to add a little bit of 
uh, straight piece off that to extend, but I'm just gonna tack this all together, but just so more of the angle iron is making contact. And then I'm also going to be making a uh, another bracket up there to the other bolt hole, and then bridging those two plates. That way there's two bolts connecting the bottom plate, and then there's three up top, and the angle iron connecting it. As for removing this in the car, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. So that will be something I'll need to possibly consider. But during all this, I've been remeasuring, so I just went ahead and leveled everything again. So this is exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to tack this all together. The top will be really easy. The bottom will be pretty hard to get to. My MIG gun isn't really cooperating very much. I had to get, buy another gun, but it's still having problems where it'll shear off right at the feed. So I need to figure that out. Otherwise I'd use my TIG welder, which is much better than this crappy piece of shit. This thing's eBay special, that thing's actually quality. I could easily TIG weld up here, just a couple tacks, but getting the torch down here, might be able to do it, you know, right there. I don't think there's any hope of me getting down in there. So I'm gonna see what I can do. I just need tacks, so if I can make this work just a little bit, uh, that's all I really need. All right, guys, I'm back. I got the right combination for the MIG welder to make it feed, finally. So I added two tacks. One worked, the other one was like really bad. And then the wire feed broke again, but changed a bunch of stuff. Basically, as you can see, it would get like just jammed. But I got that fixed. I was able to add multiple tacks here. One down there, one down there. That's probably as best I'm gonna get for the bottom, but the top is four tacks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart here and see if I can snake it out. I think. If I just lift up a little bit and then move this way, it'll be able to come out in one piece. All right, guys, finally done with these mounts here. So, well, the mock-up. This one is basically complete. I just need to take it apart and weld up everything. This side, a little bit kind of wonkier. I'm definitely going to need to brace it. So I'll be add, adding gussets, you know, anywhere that I can to strengthen it up a little bit. But right now it's good enough. And I'm thinking about maybe adding another bolt here. But we got two bolts holding it down to here. I've seen that you can possibly utilize that guy there to tie it in a little bit more, but I'm pretty certain that with the front mount, that one, and then this with the two holes should be fine. Just obviously going to strengthen this up a little bit. I was going to remove that last bolt here and try removing this mount, just see how it stays. But as you can see, the uh, motor is within one tenth of a degree. The angle of the nose of the crank to the transmission is a little bit more off than I like, but it's still under half a degree. Actually, it's coming down quite a bit. So at least from my assumption that the face of this where it'll connect to the frame should be the point that's level. This motor is pretty dang level now. And I mean, just looking at it, it looks pretty straight. This is unfortunately all guessing, but it looks pretty straight on here. And then obviously it's not coming in close to any of the uh, subframe here. So I'm gonna say this is pretty good where it is, I'm gonna bolt down everything, but maybe it takes apart for final welding. This one's mostly welded, like I said, but just need to finish up where the actual bracket goes down. And then also add the additional plate and tie it in. All right, guys, we're back. It's the far future from when I last recorded what you just saw, me getting the engine transmission on the subframe and then building out those transmission mounts. Presently, the engine is back off and where you've made a lot more progress I've been recording all too much, as you guys have seen, not a lot posted recently, so I'm hoping to get the output of videos back up. In the meantime, we went ahead and did a lot to this thing here. We got the uh, supercharger case completely ported, hogged out as much as we could, lower intake manifold as well. I'll put some clips down here, you know, as I'm talking about it, but we really opened up this thing so it will flow much more air. There's a lot of information online about what intake manifold makes the most power. Typically that is like the NA aluminum intake. They're designed for, you know, better low end torque than a gutted supercharger case like this. The runners are basically super short, just right at the lower intake manifold. So these things do well at higher RPMs in comparison, but you lose a lot of low end torque because of the runner length. Richard Holdner also did prove that you make the most horsepower on one of these things when you just remove the plate here, no throttle body, meaning that this case and setup needs a lot more airflow or wants a lot more airflow. So with that porting that I did, this thing is completely open. 
It's gonna be really hard to see in there. All that porting will definitely help this thing breathe a lot better. And then we have the 76 mil throttle blade on here. So this will be plenty for a turbo application. They don't really have much issues with uh, intakes. The people run these things twin charged, meaning that there's a rotor pack in here. So you can't really choke out a turbo, but you know, more flow, the better as I see it. Be able to run less boost for kind of the same power. It's kind of how that works. So the mounts are completely done for the transmission. I'm really excited with how they turned out. Here's the front mount here. So it connects to those three points. Then down there is one area it will connect to, one of the mounting locations, and there's the other. So using grade eight hardware, 10 mil, really stiff. Also, one thing I did not show, or at least didn't get shown, is I added this brace here. So it's boxed in pretty much everywhere. There's the ledge it sits on. So this thing's way strong now. And then the rear mount, I completely redesigned. So I still have these two bolt holes. I might add another, in retrospect, I actually might add like a nut cert here and just a tab that this will just connect to. That way it is uh, bolted on not so far away from where transmission will be mounting, but transmission will be sitting on this. This is way stronger of a design. I have no doubt that this will hold it. Both these transmission mounts and then the front Fiero Raj mounts. There should be no issues at all with setting this up. I'm very excited to get it running. So guys, that'll be it. Trying to keep this video short and sweet. I think that you guys kind of want more of uh, frequent shorter videos. So I'm going to try to do that more often for you guys. If you're a return viewer, thank you so much for, you know, coming back and continue supporting the channel. If you're a new viewer, definitely uh, stick around, subscribe, like all that good stuff will definitely help me out. Again, we're building this uh, Turbo 3800 here. Going to be powered with a Holley Terminator, five-speed manual F23 swapped. It's going to be awesome. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.